Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Omniverse Chronicles Masks Issue 7. We're so close. So close. Some kind of an end. Something. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what will happen? Uh, just a couple of reminders before I pass it over to Landon. Um, we do have a uh, survey over at Fable and Folly uh, that they have asked us to have our listeners uh, fill out. It'll take you just a couple of moments. You can do it while you listen at this very moment. Uh, it would mean a lot to us, helps us out a lot uh, as uh, Sean and Russ over at Fable and Folly uh, reach out to different advertisers. Um, I think everything else uh, we can we can hit after the fact. I'm trying to think if there's anything super pressing other than what's going on right now. No. No, let's do it. It's all about what's happening right now in this park. Landon, We've been stalling too much. <laughs> it's true. I, we have to deal with this. Yep. <laughs> yep. I don't. I don't know. Things, <laughs> maybe maybe things will be fine. It'll be fine. Nothing bad ever happens here. Hello, everyone. If you're just joining us this week, I am Landon. I am our guest GM as we are playing through Magpie Games Masks of the New Generation, which you can find at magpiegames.com or you can find them at Twitter over at Magpie Official. And that's enough plugging. I'm going to dive right in today because I'm excited to see what's going to happen. On the cover, we see a line of broken trees, buildings and citizens of Halsey invisible through the wreckage. Across the bottom of the cover, we see our team in the middle of a fight with Outlet, purple lightning streaking wildly from his body, endangering the team and innocents alike. Another scene is mirrored across the top in Axiom Terrace, as Ice and Dice, Copycat, and Oversight slip through the darkness of a visionary corporation warehouse filled with boxes of the visionary nightlight. A flutter of wings and a camera with a ra bleh, with a lavender light and a reflection of Dr. Tanner's face and the lens can be seen in the upper right corner. The Omniverse Chronicles Masks, Issue 7, Questionable Conduct. We open to our inside cover, where we have our previously on blur. There's chibi art of the team floating in a pocket dimension as Sable grabs for her grav pack, kind of apologizing for breaking gravity. Does everyone want to remind us who are they playing, and one thing they remember from last time. Um, yeah, I am playing the Codex Augury, a math magician, uh, which is the Nova playbook for masks. Um, a sort of a, um, not actual the legacy, but kind of a legacy hero, the son of, of some minor heroes learning magic in the world. And what I remember from last time is, I totally saved my crush, Jinx with some help yeah we were there too <laughs> um hi i am playing synthesis otherwise known as harper harris and i am the janus playbook and uh one thing that is very present on my character's mind right now is that we were at a pocket dimension and we lost a week and a half of time uh and now um uh i am afraid to go back home because i don't want to have to explain why i was gone to my dad uh, so I'm just trying to avoid this inevitable awkward conversation. Uh, I am playing Sable, which is the Nomad playbook. And the thing I remember from last time is I got my ass kicked in the park. But then I kind of saved myself uh, by doing a cool anti-grav flip uh, with somebody with their foot on my back and helped uh, save them from being brainwashed. Uh, and I am Vex. I am the delinquent. Uh, and the thing I remember from last week is having a moment where I was starting to connect with my brother, Outlet, uh, who is under this mind control because he was trying to fight it. And I reached out to him. And it didn't fucking work. <laughs> and like now he's blown his teammate across the room. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we open to our first panel, which is our final panel from the last issue. We see Killjoy slumped against a tree, and he's just out cold. In the background, we can see civilians are gathering, confused about what's going on. There's some excitement because, oh, look, there's Outlet. Outlet is squared up and ready to attack, and we see a momentum is at his back, ready to provide support. What do you all want to do? Um... 
I immediately turn to quartz, which is a material that conducts electricity extraordinarily well. Uh, and I would like to try to hit Outlet as hard as I can. I want to try to knock him out. All right. Um, roll to directly engage a threat. And you are currently afraid, so you have a minus two to that roll. Oh, let me give you all your one team for showing up and being here, bringing your team pool up to a four. Great. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't do that. That's um. How, how, that's how a, no is a no? That's a three. Ooh. Oh, okay. So, so that's really a no. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. All right, so describe this attack as you go in. Like, what does it look like as um, Synthesis turns into Quartz? And uh, is she just going, like, head on for the attack? What's going on I mean, here? God, probably. This this plan has gone sideways so in so many directions. I think knowing that Vex is the only thing, is the only person who can get this mind control out of people that I've seen and that doesn't work. My other thing is, well, we could knock him out. So I'm just trying to just head on charge this guy. Yeah, so you're moving in, like you do that shift to quartz. Um, and as you do, like a circle of electricity kind of just bursts out from around outlet. And it, that doesn't hurt you. Um, you're able to through the courts like very easily i'm um, just kind of redirect that conduct it off very easily it does kind of distract your vision for a moment though which takes your eyes off of momentum who is able to slingshot himself around a tree and body check you using that literal momentum that he builds up uh throwing you completely off path and through a line of other trees into the street and the civilians behind you. I would like you to roll to take a powerful blow. Yeah. Oh, good. Plus my three conditions. Yeah. Starting out real good today. Eleven. Oh. <laughs> All right. On a ten plus, choose one. Remove yourself from the situation. Lose control of yourself or your powers in a terrible way, or choose two options from the seven to nine list. The fun one. The fun one. I lose control of myself or my powers. Ooh. Do you have an idea, or would you like me to uh, no, no, no. go you for go. it? You go. All right. So the rest of the team, you see this, because somebody might want to jump in and do something about this one. Um... When you got hit by Outlet's burst of electricity, um, a lot of it did conduct out and through you, but a lot of it built up in you. And something about how your quartz that you mani uh, like manifested around you and like shifted into is like bouncing it back and forth against itself and strengthening it and strengthening it. And you can feel it heading out to discharge somewhere and you are in the middle of a crowd of people and you cannot move fast enough to get out of this crowd uh so like sable um vex and codex you all see this sort of crackling start appearing around synthesis's um quartz uh skin okay i, I okay <clears throat> um, I think I was starting to build something with something else entirely in mind, but then this. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so I think what I'm doing is, again, just drawing all of these runes, and I'm, like, building this three, like a sphere out of them, and just getting bigger and bigger. And I have my eyes on momentum, but then I see... Poor girl flipping through the air with this uh, electricity crackling through her. And so I switch some of the symbols and I want to throw it at her, essentially like trying to cover her in this hamster ball of runes to absorb that electricity as it tries to escape. All right. I would like you to roll to defend the civilians. Okay. Uh, and that's with Savior, that which is savior. isn't too bad for me right now. Um, mm -hmm. 
Mm, you don't have. Oh no, I do have insecure though. I was gonna say. Yep. Oh, yep. Okay, that's okay. It'll even out. It's just gonna be flat roll. Okay. Uh, that is a seven. Oof. It's the fun option. So, yeah. on a hate, you keep them safe. So you're gonna keep the civilians safe. You get to choose one from the fun list. You can add a team to the pool. Take influence over someone you protect. Um, since you already have influence over Synthesis, if you do that, you'll get to shift her labels. Or you can clear a condition. Oh, wait, sorry. You didn't protect Synthesis. You protected the crowd. We'll put someone interesting in the crowd if you want to do that. Like Jinx uh -oh. might have showed up. Oh, my God. Hmm. I kind of like that. Yeah, let's go with that. All right, go ahead and take influence over Jinx, as she was, in fact, <laughs> arriving on the scene um, to see what was going on. Uh, it would have ended up right in the path of that uh, electric, electric shock. Uh, on a 7 to 9, though, it cost you. Expose yourself to danger or escalate the situation. I... Uh... <laughs> I was going to say I'm going to take the hit, but Kim's nodding uh, indicates to me that we should probably escalate the situation. I'm such a creature of chaos. Uh, what? <laughs> no. Yeah, let's escalate. Ooh, that's a good escalation here. All right, so we already got a bunch of trees. There's a bunch of civilians. We got Jinx there. Oh, I know. Okay. So, I think what happens is that um, Jinx, like, sees the hamster ball thing happen, sees Outlet attacking you all, and Momentum sees Killjoy out cold, is having to very quickly make a choice about what to do here. Uh, and you see her just kind of, like, make eye contact with you for a second, Codex, and just, like, we get, like, that small speech bubble that says, I'm sorry, before she, like, makes some really swift hand motions, and the ground that all of you are standing on, like, suddenly, like, breaks out of the ground and starts to float upwards to at least get you away from the civilians. I've made a huge mistake. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I've been floating, so I'm not on the ground, but now I'm probably on the ground if the ground's come up to meet me. Yeah, the, gr the ground's <laughs> coming to meet you. <laughs> um, but, you know, some water main probably broke during that. Uh, Jinx, Jinx doesn't really think about infrastructure when she does these things. Um, she just, she's a creature of action. Uh, but yeah, Vex and Sable, what are you doing as the ground suddenly lurches into the air uh, and you're still squared up with Outlet and Momentum? Uh, so I think having watched Momentum body check synthesis, uh, what I would like to do is kind of clock where where Momentum is moving. So I want to portal on the ground and then prep the other portal in their path so Ooh. that they go through and then straight up from under the ground. And then I want to move that bottom portal so that they drop down Ooh. To, to, to slow them down and keep them from zooming all over the place. I think this is still a directly engaged because you're trying to take their positioning. Yeah. All right. So go ahead and roll to directly engage. Do, do, and that is plus danger. Danger. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Uh, okay. Plus one. Uh, I think it's interesting, too, that I've kind of begun using momentum, like, the momentum of making things fall to attack things with this power, and now I'm literally using momentum's momentum. <laughs> Is 
seven. All right. So on a seven to nine, you get to pick one. On a hit, trade blows. Seven to nine, pick one. Okay, I'm gonna go with. I'm. I guess take something from them, and that would be like their, their positioning, their control over like how quickly they can maneuver around us. All right, and so I want to make sure that I'm understanding this properly. Are you trying to get him off the floating island? Because that's kind of what I was following, but um, because there was something about a portal down. Sometimes I have trouble following where exactly. Yeah, no, 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 that's like on a 3D landscape. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think because I want it to be on solid ground. Like I, I want it to be in a solid place so that it, as he's running through the first portal, he's just coming straight up out of the ground and then that bottom portal disappears so that he comes back down. Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, so I can talk maybe. Okay. <laughs> so you get that first, like you get your bottom portal set up fine. Um, and kind of all of this chaos, momentum's a little thrown off by the ground suddenly lurching. Uh, you're doing okay with that because you have the grav pack. You're able to follow where he's going because he has to slow down for a second anyways as he kind of like regains his footing. You get that shot off. He goes through. You get the next shot off. Uh, we hear like a kind of frustrated groan. Uh, or, like, yell. Like, there's that speech bubble from, like, down below. Um, but in that process, you have been, like, laser-focused in on momentum because you really had to, like, keep both eyes on him the entire time. Uh, otherwise, you were going to lose track of him. Uh, and Outlet definitely was 100% fine using his teammate as bait to keep you distracted uh, and was starting to charge up a rather large electric attack focused specifically towards, like, your, like, grav pack and portal gun. Uh, Vex, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to try and uh, basically get between him uh, and absorb that, hit that, catch that blast. All right. Roll to defend Sable. Yeah. Uh, which you get a plus one to because you have influence over her. It's true, but I'm also insecure. Okay, uh, so uh, defend is savior. Uh, so that takes me to a 12 minus two, so 10 still. Nice. Awesome. So that is a full hit. So on a hit, you keep them safe and choose one. Add a team, take influence, or clear a condition. Uh, I think I'm going to clear a condition. Uh, I think that I teleport and appear uh, in front of of uh, Outlet as this blast lets loose. And, uh, you know, I, I've talked about it before, but we all see for the first time that this electricity hits me and it's just like it, it fades away. Like it doesn't even wrap around. It just is absorbed. Um, and I think after that hit takes place, we get kind of this very calm panel for a second uh, it's like a two-page spread as all of you sort of regain your footing for a moment um we see like um i'm assuming that codex has let synthesis out of the hamster ball at this point <laughs> since she's no longer leaking electricity <laughs> yeah uh so we see that like codex and synthesis have both regained their footing uh, Sable's perfectly fine, um, probably not even totally, probably somewhat aware about the attack that was going to be coming her way, but was super focused in on momentum, and everybody is turning towards Outlet. Um, and kind of as we get this moment, we see Outlet's, um, eyes kind of go, like, they had a bit of a lighter sheen of purple, and we see that sheen sort of intensify. Both of us here. You know, there's only one way that this actually ends. And I raise both of my fists into a, like a, a stance and wait. Roll to provoke someone. <laughs> oh yeah, I know how to provoke this guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is superior 12. 
All right, I'm assuming... Uh, so when you provoke someone susceptible to your words, say what you're trying to get them to do. I'm assuming you want him to fist fight you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. I do indeed. Um, we see on the panel kind of like the lightning calm down a little bit for a second, but then this sort of like wall pops up behind, uh, I almost just called Vex Rev, <laughs> behind and Vex um, kind of cutting him off from the team as Outlet just goes in to deck you, uh, Vex. Um, boy, How I... do we think fighting has gone between the two of you before, like hand to hand? Uh, not overly... Like, it turns into not actual combat it turns into like when two very close to the same age siblings under the age of 16 scrap and like holding yeah. each other down like it's a lot of just of of a of abuse of each other as opposed to actual like fighting technique it all kinds of goes out the window yeah that's what i figure like it pretty quickly is going to devolve into like basically like both of you on the ground <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I, th I think that like calling him out like this and seeing this wall of energy go up and it's just the two of us. I think I'm going to use my moment of truth. Ooh. Uh, which All I, right. I unlocked last week when I leveled up. Okay. So when you unlock your moment of truth, you can activate it at any time. Read your moment of truth out loud from the back of your playbook and follow that script. In essence, you, the player, take full control of the narrative in this moment. The GM will let you know what consequences arise. After you use your moment of truth, permanently lock one label. You have changed and some part of you has become set in stone. So, what okay. is the delinquent's moment of truth? <clears throat> this is when you show them what you really are, whether you're the hero underneath the rebel facade or the one who can make the hard choice heroes can't make. You do whatever it takes to show that truth, whether it's saving the day from a terrible villain or stopping a bad guy once and for all. Of course, once you've shown what you really are, there's no going back to playing the clown. And... I think that in this moment they start to fight and we see this, this, this large panel spread of what the fight could be. It's the two of them fighting on the ground and, and just getting roughed and just beating on each other, but not in a way that actually ends anything. And then the next panel we see is, outlet charging at Vex and Vex is dodging the hits and actually using fighting technique. And the first, that first collision of images we saw was kind of tainted in that, that purple. And the next group of images is kind of in the, the, the white and yellow of uh, the electricity that comes off of outlet. And, you know, it's, it's a very, it's like the entire fight and then the entire fight again. And then we turn the page and it is Vex standing there as Outlet charges towards him. And then he appears behind him and twists his neck and just knocks him unconscious. It is not any of these fighting styles of being the better person, being the better fighter. It's knowing his weakness and it's that he charges head on at something and doesn't watch his own back. That's why he needs a team. And I can't save him from this in this moment. But I have to stop him. All right. What label are you locking? Uh, I think I'm going to lock my superior at three. All right, and you're just knocking him out, right? You're not trying Correct. to kill him. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. good. Just confirming, just <laughs> confirming. I always make sure. <laughs> yeah. 
it is it is definitely it like well that's for you to say i was gonna say there's definitely maybe long-term ramifications but it is not the intent is not to kill him oh yeah and i always put that intent intent in the player's hands that is very much a player agency thing for me so that's why yeah. i wanted to check and make sure uh, that yeah, i was following you and it's very much like multiple panels multiple panels two panels of the reality yeah, so I think, like, we get that really just, like, shocked panel, like, close-up panel of Outlet's face as his eyes turn back to their normal color for a moment. Um, all of you, like, the rest of the team, the you couldn't really see what was going on because that wall of electricity was up. So all you see is, like, that wall of electricity drop at the same time that, like, Vex is standing behind his brother as his brother falls to his knees and then slumps over. I, I'm just running over to where he is. Oh my gosh, what happened? We've got to get him someplace safe. Codex, can you make sure he's okay? Make sure he's stable. Yeah, I can try, and I'm going to literally fly over and try to scoop him up and check his vitals, and yeah. Um, I think on a quick check, like, you're able to tell, like, he needs attention. 100% needs attention, without a doubt. Um, but he's stable at this moment. Nothing's broken. You can move him. I don't know where to take him. That'll be safe. Maybe to my parents. That's kind of what I was thinking. And I'm through the air. Uh, and so, yeah, as he takes off with him, I'll turn to the other two. What happened to momentum? I look at Sable. Oh, oh, over, over, he, over here. And I'll, I'll head right over to where he fell. As you head over, you, like, look over and you see Jinx just, like, flicking him in the forehead and being like, you are such an idiot. And, like, each flick we see a bit more of, like, the purple just, like, flying out of him in the process. She could do this much more politely, but she's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you and Killjoy always getting in fights with... <laughs> And now I have to get in here and fix everything. Um, oh, Killjoy. He oh. is still slumped up against a tree on this floating island. <laughs> Shit, yeah, I'll head over there. Uh, he's uh, coming back, like, around at this point. Um, still very, like, definitely has a concussion. Um, he was hit with basically like almost outlets full power outlet was not holding back on that hit at all um and he is just like not doing hot um but he's also like completely back mentally at this point uh and like when you run over he just kind of looks at you sable and is like i don't know why i was I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. Yep, nope, you were brainwashed. I'm, I'm sorry for f flipping you up into the air, but it's cool. Oh, whatever. no, um, I deserve that. That was cool. You're not wrong. We gotta go. And I'll, uh, I'll grab him. I, I think I'll just grab Pack, like, lower him down off of this floating island that Jinx has still left in the air. <laughs> uh, I think now that Vex and I are seemingly alone... I just look at him. Are you okay? I think in in the back of his head, he hears that sound that his brother's neck made. And he kneels over and throws up. Hey, hey, it's 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 okay. It's okay. Yeah. He, um, 
He'll be he'll be okay, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Codex's parents are like they'll 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 help. It's it's gonna be okay. There'd have been no end to it if 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 we didn't stop him. Mm -hmm. It whatever we do today won't matter because it would just keep keep spreading. Yeah, yeah. What do you need? What where do you where do you want to go? You uh we you shouldn't be here. You need what what can I do? You can help me destroy that fucking computer so that Dr. Tanner can't do this to anybody else. Great. Let's go. Bex, do you feel like you shared a vulnerability or weakness there? That felt like a kind of vulnerable moment. Yeah. And I like the delinquent's vulnerability or weakness move a lot here. Um, so when you share a vulnerability or weakness with someone, give them influence over you and ask them who they'd like you to be. Hmm. Who would you like me to be? <laughs> Let me ask that in character. <laughs> Not just I, me as the player. Um, I, I think that as they nod at this agreement, I'm bouncing around a lot. Like, there's a team dynamic here that I still don't understand. What do I be to help you the best to make this team the best it can be? Vex. I trust your instincts. Tell me when I'm... <laughs> About to do something stupid, like charge your brother head on. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done that. And I shouldn't have, if I hadn't acted so stupid, then you wouldn't have had to do what. I'm sorry. I made a bad call. And I need you to tell me when I am. All right. All right. So take note of that because you'll get to mark potential if you show them that you could be the person that calls them out when they're going to make a bad call. Yeah. And then synthesis, you get to shift uh, Vex's labels. You cannot move his superior. What are your other ones up? Uh, so my mundane is negative one. My savior is plus one. My freak and danger are zero. Okay. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to raise your mundane for being so vulnerable with me. And I think I'm going to lower your danger. All right. Cool. So, Codex, you were headed for your parents, right? Yes. Did we ever uh, name your parents? Yes. <laughs> okay. Let me open that real quick. I'm fairly certain that that's true. Uh, yes. Uh, Fred and Carla. Oh. Uh, Fred love, and Carla Augury. Mr. and <laughs> yeah. Mrs. Augury. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, your your parents live a pretty quiet life anymore, right? Or, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think they're always sort of reserved for the city's been destroyed. Someone come help clean up and, you know, the, you know that kind of thing. But um, otherwise, yes, pretty quiet. Yeah, so when you come racing home, your dad is like mowing the lawn. And your mom is like sitting in the front room reading a book. Uh, yeah, I literally just float down over the the lawn 
and like signal with clear panic um, towards dad and then just burst through the front door and uh, I I lay outlet on the couch very carefully. Um, your dad rushes inside to follow you, but your mom makes it over to outlet first, of course, being inside. Um, and she kind of leans down, is like looking over him, and we see her rooms, um, which I think hers are a bit more like um, green orange, like the green in yours comes a lot from hers. Nice. Um, as she kind of starts to like um, cast her own sort of construct over him, which you recognize to an extent. Your mom does a lot more healing than you do. Um, so it quickly passes, like, your level of understanding. You're like, okay, this is, like, advanced, like, advanced, advanced calculus, and I can do trig. Um, nice. yeah. And as she's doing that, um, she looks at you and... <laughs> Frustratingly can do this without even paying attention to what she's casting at this point. Oh, that's and... what that feels like. Okay. <laughs> Your mom's a master. <laughs> like, 100%. She is a master at what she does. Um, uh, Codex, what's... what's? I'm assuming your parents call you... Codex is just your name, right? Uh, if... Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I'm in costume, so they probably would. Yeah, okay. uh, not many people do, but they would call me uh, Theo. Okay. We'll go with Theo then. Sorry, we haven't had a lot of interaction with your parents. Mm -mm. <laughs> um, Theo, um, what's what's going on? Um, I... The visionary lady called earlier, oh, and shit. There's there's something going on here and she like gestures over outlets brain <laughs> yeah yeah um if visionary calls again you haven't seen me i've been out doing whatever and you haven't seen me um i can't i don't know that i can say too much but his mind has been affected and i can't take him to a hospital and i can't take him to visionary he, he's he's sort of brainwashed and Vex, uh, Vex knocked him out here in fairly serious fashion. And so we can't, um, I don't, I just, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I just, I panicked and you're always who I think of when I panic. Uh, your dad puts like a hand on your shoulder. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey. And does the reassuring dad, like, pat shoulder rub thing. It's, it's okay. It's, we'll, we'll look after him and we won't say anything, but you might want to have your other teammates, if they have any family, have them checked on. Um, Dr. Tanner seemed pretty insistent that we come in for something, um, your mother and I at least have the excuse of we need to be available should anything. Did you go? No. Okay, don't. I cannot stress enough. Please trust me. Do not go. We weren't going to. We... You're our son and we support you doing what you want to do, but we also don't like the surveillance state thing, you know, it's, it's magic should be kept at a certain level and surveillance just, makes it hard. Anyway, I you have you this so much. from your father so <laughs> many times. <laughs> I, I just, I, I hug him and then hug mom. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I feel like fixing whatever is affecting his mind. It was above my pay grade. So I didn't, try yet um but i guess i can but that terrifies me either way i need to uh take a second um uh, i'll be right back and um i step into the next room and immediately send oh man but we are using those phones 
Oh, fun is what that is. Um, I think I'm like, I've got like two words written and just stop and delete, delete, delete. And they hear me string cuss just in the next room and then step back in. Sorry. Outburst there. I have to go. Uh, right, right, right now. Um, Please, if you can, keep keep him hidden. Keep him unconscious. And let me know if you can fix the thing. And if not, I'll, I'll, we'll, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure something out. But I just, I can't send the message I need to, so I got to go to them. Yeah, don't worry. We, we support you, son. We, we know you can do this. Thank you. I love you so much. Boom. Love like. you too. Be safe. Uh, and hey. I think you're, they're raising your savior and lowering your danger on your way out the door. <laughs> Make good choices. You, you, can't have, you can't have supportive parents without them using their influence on you. <laughs> uh, yeah. That was, oh boy, up savior and down danger. Yep. Neat. Okay. It's what they're all about. You all are protectors. That's what you do. Yep. So I am, I mean, as fast as I can make myself go trying to get back to them. Um, yeah, go ahead and roll to unleash your powers. Let's see uh, how quickly you make it back. Okay. Because you're really pushing yourself in your powers right now. Yeah, I bet. Be I awful bet something I'm bad tired. happens in the meantime. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, unleash is Freak. Yeah. Oh, thank every god. I, I'm at a zero right now, but that's still an 11. Nice. Um, I have an idea for why you're able to, like, do this very quickly. And, like, make it back to the group very quickly. Okay. Um... Because you did just spend a lot of time, or at least a decent chunk of time, fighting a speedster. So you might have been able to pick up, like, some of the latent mathematics in the world around, like, how speedsters affect the math around them. Mm -hmm. And we're just able to kind of, like, apply that on the fly. You generally don't do this, but this is a pressing circumstance, so you decided to, you know, test it out on the fly. Awesome. Um, so I think Codex makes it back to the group of you surprisingly quickly. Um, like, you're kind of just, like, I think you got... Uh, Sable, where did you take Killjoy? Like, did you just get Killjoy down to the ground, basically? And yeah, that's it. Over to Jinx and Momentum, and Jinx probably also then started yelling at Killjoy. Um, somehow for being the youngest of the group, she's always the one who's lecturing everybody. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to be mom age to be the mom friend. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, I hit hit the ground at a skid. Uh, they're they're getting a hold of our parents. What? I know that doesn't apply to everybody here, but they're getting a hold of our parents. What? They got a hold of mine to get them to try to come in for something. Visionary. Yes. I check I'm my for something. I check my phone. Have I heard from dad? Um, yes, you have heard from your dad. Great. What does it say? Uh, it says that, uh, he hopes that your work trip is still going well. He's not expecting to get a response to this. Um, but that he has been asked by Dr. Tanner, who he knows is like your boss to come in and been given an opportunity to get to see some of the things that you like are working on and that like they want to talk to him and like get to show off some of the things you've been doing with them and like at school and that like he's real excited and he was surprisingly able to get the afternoon off work which you know like never happens he has no clue how that panned out um someone else took up one of his cases and he doesn't anyways he's real excited um so he's gonna go check it out how long ago was that message sent you know, probably right around the time that you uh, sank into the cement. Jesus. 
They have my dad. My dad's there and he doesn't, he doesn't know about me. He doesn't know about any of this. We'll get him. We'll get him. My uncle wants nothing to do with anything super or anything that's not mundane finances or whatever the hell it is he does. But... And I think I, I look at Vex. I'm sorry that you had to do that. But we're going to make it worth it. He's going to be okay, but we're going to make it worth it. And I think I grabbed my, my anti-grab pack. And I think for, I, uh, I leveled up last, last game. And I think I'm going to um, have, have unlocked my moment of truth as well. Um, just because... I feel like a lot of my moment of truth stuff kind of revolves more around putting down roots and like we've seen Sable go from like running into her friend and being like, hey, let's just leave. Let's just dip. <laughs> let's just get out of here to being like, I'm going to do what it takes to do what's right in this situation. Um, and I think I, I hold my anti-grav pack and I, I just say, I don't I don't know how to how to do it, how to make it work exactly. But Tanner really wants their hands on this and I think I think we can use it to shut down the computer or shut down his access or remove remove them from the situation in some way. I I don't know, but I, I think this is a good plan at least to get us there and it seems like we need to get there now. How big is your grav pack? It's about like this big. Okay. It's just like a pack like that's on my my hip belt that I can hit kind of, there's like a switch that I can hit to activate it on and off. Uh I think as we're standing there looking at it Can you I know you can take on the property of physical things. Can you become like a gas? Um, yeah, but not for very long. It's a, it's harder to hold something that doesn't, uh, that's a difficult to do, but I have done it. Why? That was getting carried into the good doctor's inner sanctum. It'd be a great place to hide. Yeah. You're right. I've never um I've never tried to change my dimensions that much, but this sure seems like a good time to try. I know you want to find your dad. Yeah. You just told me to speak up when I see something about to happen. Mhm. Mm and I think what Visionary is going to expect to happen is you kicking in that door, finding them. But if it was us, and you were somewhere else completely, they'd never see that coming. You're right. I trust you. Okay. Do we want to shut down the computer or access it? Well, that's what I've been struggling to try to figure out what's the other half of this, because obviously stopping it will, in theory, stop the um, uh, possession or whatever. But if we destroy everything, how do we prove what they were doing? Unless we somehow, how are we ever going to get through the door, like live streaming it or something? I I don't know how we'll get away with something like that. Landon, is this something I could maybe work out using my um, all the best stuff move? 
Burr. Okay, then I would like to try that. All right. Do you want to go ahead and roll, uh, read your all the best stuff move? I do. Okay. So <laughs> all, the <laughs> all the best stuff. You've compiled access to caches of equipment and weaponry other supers have hidden in the city. When you access a cache, say whose cache it is. If it's a hero's, roll plus savior. If it's a villain's, roll plus danger. On a hit, you find a tool or intel useful to your situation. The GM will detail. On a 7 to 9, you leave evidence that you've been here. On a miss, you tripped an alarm, and they're coming prepared to explain yourself. All right. Whose cash are we going for? Um, I think it's probably going to be a villain's, because I'm thinking it's going to be something that I can, like, implant in the graph pack. So as Tanner is disassembling it or figuring it out, it's something that we can use to, like live access files and videos or the proof that we need. So it's probably something like hackery and kind of like a something undetectable that vil a villain would use to, to gain information for nefarious purposes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did give you one villain like that who happens to be your friend, Sapphire. She's it's a pretty true. good hacker. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> and I have her number. So so you probably reasonably know where her cash is. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's, um, so does she count as a villain or would that be a hero? He's a villain. The line is so fine. Okay, I know, right? Well, it, like, it is, it's a very fine line. You could convince me on hero, but. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I would say hero in the sense of like, all right. She she contacted us to go to that party so that we could like she could talk to us about stopping visionary. And I feel like that's a, that's a pretty heroic thing to do, even if it was with you know her best interest at heart. It's still a she's all not right. trying to destroy things. Also, that gives me a plus two instead of a plus one. So all right, go ahead and roll with savior then. Oh, what is this? Oh, I like that one. Eight. All right. I should have this move open in front of me so I can read it. Even though I know you read it to me. Brain <laughs> audio uh, story. Seven process. to nine, you leave evidence you've been here. <laughs> but I get, uh, I, on a hit, I find a tool in a tool or intel useful to my situation. Uh, but, I, but I leave evidence that I've been there. <laughs> nice. This is perfect. All right. Um, it's a note that says, I owe you. <laughs> hey, hey, girl. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay. Yeah. So um, where is her cash and like, what does, is it just like a, a MacGuffin basically that you're, <laughs> you're. Um, I think it's maybe at the school. Okay. But it's somewhere that like. I think it's in the, it's in the back of one of the vending machines that like she kind of has uh, access to on hand uh, to be able to to hide away and and get to uh, when she needs it. And I discovered it when I was trying to break into one. I love this so much. <laughs> All right. And so you're trying to get something that'll basically let you like get proof or in like sort of do you want the live stream access I mean, aspect or just like uh getting the proof sort of aspect this hand motion is i mean do we have a way to to broadcast the a live stream in the way that we would want i guess that's something that i would be the device can do it if you want that to be a thing yeah i mean i i, I guess that's part of the the discussion of just in case something goes wrong like do we want to live stream this so that people can see it? Yeah. Yeah. That way it's not on us to get the information and then safely get it out. Do you think it'll work? I think it'll work. And I think it's going to be pretty fucking cool. I absolutely trust you. If you say it will, let's do it. All right. All right. Um, so you kind of pilfer your way through 
the thing she has hidden in here. Some of it's just, like, basic stuff. Um, there's, like, a bunch of pens and pencils in here because, you know, you're always losing those. Uh, some illegal snacks. And by illegal, it's just, you know, the high fructose corn syrup uh, gummy snacks you're not supposed to have at schools anymore. Yes. Um, <laughs> delicious, delicious. Love it. You know, the, the, the good I, snacks. I pocket those as well. <laughs> oh, that's how she knows that it was you that was in here. <laughs> you, took the go you took the fruit <laughs> snacks. My um, one weakness, that and not having powers. <laughs> um, but you're able to find this um, sort of, it's a two-piece um, USB device. One would go into either, like, somebody's phone or, like, other sort of, like, laptop, PC, something like that, uh, as a receiver, and the other end would go into whatever you're trying to hack out of um, so that you could get that feed out of it. Uh, you also notice that there's, like, a little camera built into it. It's, like, the ultimate spy hacking gadget. Um, and there's, like, a sticky note stuck to it that, um, evidently Sapphire makes a lot of, like, you're noticing this as you're going through that she makes a lot of prototypes of things. Uh, because there's, like, a little, like, okay, functional, like, functional for like xyz and you're like okay yeah broadcasting hacking blah 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 and it's like things that it doesn't do access social media um like if there's like a couple of things like that but you would be able to like through whatever receiver device you have put it the rest of the way through okay yeah then i'll, I'll kind of lay that out for everyone all right i i think if you can if you can turn into a gas, we could probably put, like, a little, I don't know, canister or something in here for you to, like, stabilize yourself until you're able to escape. Um, but we're going to have to, like, broadcast this through whatever we receive this through. Also, I mean, we got to figure you, out a way. Oh, sorry. Gonna... You do note that there is a range of, like, 500 yards noted on it. Yeah. And we've got 500 yards. So we'll have to set up something fairly close. But I'm also thinking of like, okay, how do we get it to them? Like, my first thought is, all right, synthesis is gone. And the three of us bust in to like free everyone and we fight and I lose it and we have to escape. And it's like left behind. Because if I show up, and, you know, they're already, like, grabbing parents and family members. It's going to be kind of suspicious if I'm like, you know what? I decided to give you my one treasured piece of technology that you've coveted this entire time. This isn't sketchy at all. So I feel like I have to... It, ha it, it can't be a willing sacrifice. Thoughts, comments, questions. I mean, I, I feel like that's a pretty solid plan, but uh, if anybody can improve on it a little bit, I suppose. I'm still trying to think about the range thing. So is it that it can only broadcast up to 500 yards? We need something else to like push it further? The receiver needs to be within 500. Okay, yards. within 500 yards. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. So, I mean, Vax, is that something you can set up basically, I don't know, in the next building or something? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if we if we assume that this is going into Dr. Tanner's office, I mean, finding a place that's 500 from that, it won't be difficult. We go in swinging. That's it. Yeah. They're going to know basically what we know. I mean, I'm sure they have an idea already with this, but there's also the chance that we don't. 
get away. If they're going after our families, they probably already know. Which is, I'm saying they're probably prepared for this. So do we go in swinging, acting like we're acting impulsively? And make mistakes in the process? And that's how I... That's how I lose this. And then we just get away looking like, oh shit, we underestimated everything. We thought we could do more than we can. Yeah, I think that we think about every mistake they've seen us make moments where we have made the wrong call disappeared when we shouldn't gone big when we should have gone small and everybody pick one moment to do that thing that's your reason for why things didn't quite go right and we got to get out of here definitely done a lot of that yeah okay so then <clears throat> What besides leaving this also are we trying to accomplish? For sure now with this in mind as well. Like what are all of the what are all of the pieces? Anybody we can get out, I can cure. Yeah. Where do we put them? The barn? We're going to get synthesis in. How do we get back in? Uh, what is, what does she do when she's there? I, this is going to be great if we get this information, we get it out. But what's to stop them from changing tactics? What if they don't care about flying under the radar anymore? Well, if this goes the way we want... It's not how you're supposed to plan a thing, but if it goes exactly the way we want and we get these people out and we clear their heads, they can go off of their own plan because then we'll have an army. Because we could free the people. The problem is that the public wouldn't know it. Now the public will know it. That's the only thing that really is going to stop them. It'll stop them from their goal, which ultimately, yes, great. It certainly isn't probably going to stop them from coming after us after the fact. Oh, sure. But that's, yeah, I mean, we'll see when we see and... Crack some skulls if we need to. Yeah, I mean, I'm coming up on a birthday. I, it's probably about time I have an arch nemesis. Oh, shit, when's your birthday? Next week. What? Oh, nice. You told Dude. us now? Oh, wait. We lost a week and a half. Ooh, three days ago. Oh, oh God. Oh. We'll have to have two yeah. parties then. Yeah, I guess. I hate just hiding and having the rest of you go into something so dangerous. Yeah, well. You're, you're going to be in danger too. Yeah. And sometimes being the leader means stepping back and directing the field and waiting for your moment to make the critical move. Uh -huh. And that's okay. And that's what we signed up for. And what's and really, that look I mean, for me? You... Try to smash that computer? I would say to smash Dr. Tanner. <laughs> Apparently that's almost the same thing. Yeah. Take them Imagine out the look camp. of surprise. Sitting at the table, working on this grav pack. 
guard down, gloating in a moment of victory, and then you materialize in front of them. If you could do this before they do irreparable damage to my favorite tool, I would I would not be upset about that. If you can't if you can't, I get it. I get it. We're still cool. But like, if you can, like maybe just I will try if you try to do something for me. Sure. Uh, and I want to pull up my phone and pull up my dad's very dorky Facebook profile picture. Um, I know that there are probably lots of other heroes and villains that are probably in Visionary that are much more important to get out and have Vex help them. But if you see him, if you could... I'll get him. Thanks. No problem. It's a great picture, by the way. It's, no, it's not. It's not. It's, no, I, I like it. It's good. Yeah, it's pretty good. And now I need you to do something for me. Uh-huh. That moment where you appear in front of Dr. Tanner. Uh-huh. God, please do it in front of a camera so we can watch it later. <laughs> I will do my best. I've, I've got to put it to music and oh, it's going to be great. Oh, there's a camera in this thing. If they're working on it, oh, we should awesome. get we should get front row seats. Great. This is all very dependent upon me being able to use my powers in a way that I've never used them before. So we should probably check to see if that's going to work before we get uh, too invested in this plan. Nah, you got would... it. I mean, yeah, sure, that's a good idea. Uh huh. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to try to turn to gas and hide inside of this canister. All right. Roll to unleash your powers. Yep. It's a flat zero. <laughs> when my dice fell on the floor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I keep it. The dice are like, we know your stress. Let's make this more stressful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, that's a nine. We do have five team in the pool. If someone thinks they can help. I, I almost feel like Codex probably makes the most sense to help someone adjust a molecular structure mathematically. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's something to, like, I know what she can do and how she does it, but this is wildly different. So there's something to the thought of, I'm 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 writing these runes around her as sort of like compensation for the math of density versus um, mass and so on. And it literally trying to feed these runes into her to disperse her into gas. All right. So we all see Synthesis turn into a gas and hide into this canister. Synthesis does not like this. It's Ooh, really uncomfortable. Notably, Synthesis's mask falls onto the ground as she does this. Oh. Sure does. Oh, I can't believe <laughs> I've done this. Uh, I'm going to pocket it. I put it on. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the leader now. <laughs> I'm the business now. Bow That's down all to it me. was. It was just the visor. <laughs> oh my God. I, I hit my grab pack and I raise in the air. Bow down to me. <laughs> Surprise. This was my ultimate plan. <laughs> Unmanned villain. <laughs> <laughs> all right what are you doing now i think i'm um i'm texting my uncle just Ooh. just to make sure all right what uh, what do you send him i think i'm just sending him uh Hey, you haven't heard anything from Visionary, have you? Question mark. Um, 
I think you actually get a response pretty promptly, um, which is kind of surprising from your uncle to begin with. Um, that says, we have an investor meeting with them here in about 30 minutes. Why? All caps. Don't go. Roll to provoke someone. I send the, I send a gif of the Admiral Akbar. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> provoke someone. That is Curia. Um oof, and I am feeling guilty. So it's gonna be a negative two. And I rolled a five, so no. So that's gonna put me at two. <laughs> a two. No, three. three. I can't math. Yeah. It's a three. Um you get back a I'm already on the hyper train. Like and you know, you know once you're on the hyper train, like you you can't get off at that point. Like you're going to visionary. And I just text him back, all right, see you soon. Fuck. You send them the it's a it's a trap gif. He responds with the Han Solo, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking yes. you're playing a game. <laughs> yeah. I, I do I just I'm like, okay, okay then. I'll see you soon. I'm, I'm, yeah, now I'm just, I'm just annoyed now. Fuck. So, Welp. They're just getting to everyone. Your uncle too? Yep. All right. It doesn't change the plan. We've got this. Hey, we've got this. Okay. Yep. Let's so, go. We just literally going in swinging? I think we have to look uh, completely unprepared. We have no to look... problem. <laughs> we, I mean, we have to look like we have not thought about this at all, that we are just some dumb teenagers acting on instinct. Okay. Throw some wild punches. I'm probably going to have to take a hit. I think I I I think I mess with the uh, the belt of my where my grav pack is attached to, so that it it'll easily detach. Like it'll it will break when I need it to break, so I can pull on it and it'll break. So it doesn't look like I left it behind. Nice. I'll take a hit. And Vex, you just gotta get me out of there. I will. Okay. All right. And we turn the page. Where do we find you on the visionary campus? Where are you where are you coming in at? Do we know where they keep pr prisoners? Like we've encountered a prisoner, but I don't know. Ooh, I remember the orator told you. I think the orator told you which of the like because the orator wasn't on the main island. Um, yeah. The orator was on, like, one of the sub-islands. And I think he told you which one he was on. So. Yeah, vision, uh, Axiom Terrace C. Because they're very creative in their naming. You all are normally on Axiom Terrace Prime. You know, the, the place you really actually want to be. Yeah. I think we we go in and try and free as many people as we can first till we're found out. Yeah. Uh, as we go, I would love to be charging this burn. All right, go ahead and roll to charge your burn, please. Ooh. I love these GM reactions. It's so terrifying and exciting. <laughs> there was nothing else going on here already. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, not, uh, not shabby. That... Thank God for my conditions, I guess. So 10. Um, nice. So hold three burn. Okay. All right. So um, we like turn the page and I imagine you all just kind of come into the middle of Axion Terrace C because you don't really know the layout of this island very well. Um Whereas Prime is, like, very bright and airy, and it's, like, the future. This is where you want to live. C is very 
storage prisoners. Storage prisoners, storage prisoners. So it's just kind of a bit more utilitarian across the board. Um, the buildings are very um, homogeneous. It's all very just gray with kind of the occasional visionary um, logo on the warehouses. And one of the first things that kind of jumps out at you when you come in is that you already hear an alarm going off in one of the buildings. Um, that are they were they ready for us? No, I think that that's uh, the plans A through D that got unleashed when we vanished for a week. Okay, great. We may have a distraction or they'll be on higher alert. Either way, fucking hilarious. Let's plant the receiver and go. Yeah. Let's let's see if we can find anyone to get out of here first. Yeah. Yeah. Um I'm going to say not the building that the alarm is coming from. My impression is going to be that any team that she has sent in, not here to rescue people. Oh, fair. Okay. So then, yeah, I think looking for like, what is the furthest entrance from the, uh, from the raucous. Would somebody like to give me a role to assess the situation? Uh, yeah. Uh, that is, uh, an, no, that is a 12. Oh, All right. yeah. Uh, and I'm going to use criminal mind. Ooh. Uh, so I think the first question I'm going to ask is from that. Um, uh, no, you know what? I, all right. That's a lie. I'm going to wait. Um, what here is most, mm, such a liar the delinquent such a liar he can't decide what question he wants to ask um <laughs> what here is the biggest threat uh so you all aren't like quite in the middle of everything you have some cover so you are spotted when this happens. We just see this happen on the pages. Um, we see through like the wall of that building, um, somebody go like get punched through the wall and go flying out. We see wings come unfurled um, and like right themselves midair. And we recognize this as Rook now in like a visionary uniform of like, all signed up. Um, but Rook's not the biggest threat. Uh, because Rook just got slammed through a wall. The biggest threat is the person who's stepping through the rubble of the wall oversight. And she does not look happy. And she has some new friends behind her. Um, but she has, like, smoke trailing from one of her hands. And that smoke, as it trails, keeps kind of, like, sparking. And as it sparks, it seems to be, like, deteriorating the wall around her more and breaking it down further. Whoa. Okay, uh, what here is in the greatest danger? The structural integrity of the island. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think since we're trying to find people, uh, what here is useful or valuable to me from the criminal mind? Um, so all of this fight that's going on, like, aside, you see, like, some reinforcement drones being sent in to help Rook. He, he signed up. Who knows? Um, there is, you can see that, like, oh, as, like, this all happens, what kind of draws your attention as you all kind of dived for cover is that there was kind of one of those, um, 
on the side of this building, you see that there are directions spray painted, sort of go this way for this, go that way for that. Um, and you see that there are directions for like the intake processing cell holding area, um, which would feasibly be the place where one, if they haven't had like your fa friends, family, and loved ones for too long, most likely where they would be. And two, where there's most likely to be a large concentration of people. Okay. Yeah, I will, uh, seeing that, I'll indicate to that. Looks like this is our direction. All right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Hopefully Tanner figures out we're here sooner rather than later. Yeah, we may have a little more time than we expected because that's drawn a big crowd. <laughs> and I'll start moving us that way. Um, You run down this sort of path towards intake and holding. Um, and as you make it towards intake and holding, you also see that like just past intake and holding, there's some um, what's kind of marked as like higher security cell blocks. Um, it seems like basically because they have a lot of security near intake and holding, they also put some of their higher security there uh, because they just keep a lot of personnel up here. Um, but the intake and holding building looks basically like a large warehouse from the outside. Um, but when you like rush in through one of the doors, it looks like fairly stereotypical visionary infrastructure once you get inside. Um, the lights are currently still on, but they're kind of flickering each time you hear a crash in the distance. Um, and you can hear kind of like somebody's voice in the distance that seems to be like directing a crowd. What do you want to do? No, we're not doing that. Part of me is like wanting to go up and try to play off like trying to help, but that's that's not that's not what we need right now. Um, I'm so stressed out because I can't do anything. <laughs> so you just you just hanging out on my hip. Yep. You can just yell at people from the <laughs> in the canister. From the. <laughs> I mean, you can head towards the voices and see yeah. what's going on. I just wanted we, to give you the opportunity because I always like to give the pause to not just make people run right into things. Okay. Do we recognize any of the voices? <laughs> I don't think so. And the question that I'd have to ask would give away who the voice is. <laughs> okay. Um, the only person who might would be Coda. Mm. Um, yeah, I think just trying to get closer then to see if I can hear a voice or, I mean, get close enough to see what's going on. Yeah. So I think as you get closer, um, you all see that, um, like, one, you can feel the reverberations of the fight that's happening in here as sort of like the island is definitely going questionably. You can hear more of visionaries, um, not just drones at this point, like other security personnel are getting deployed. Um, the security that are working this building um, have kind of like taken a more of a we're just going to cover our own selves and not worry about all these prisoners in this holding cell approach. Um, and this building is questionable on whether or not it's going to hold up. Hold up. And uh, what you all kind of see and you're able to identify, Sable, you recognize because you just saw a picture of this person that the person who's um, shouting out instructions to this crowd is actually Synthesis's dad. 
um, as he's working on organizing this group to like help people get into safer locations within this holding cell, um, helping to like keep people calm. He is a social worker. Like he's just immediately jumping in and doing crisis management because he doesn't know what else to do right now, even right. though he is also in the crisis himself. Um, I think I look at Codex. Can you tell if they're brainwashed or if they're just kidnapped? Oh, um, yeah, I can tell, but it's going to hurt. Um, I think I pull up my runes again in that screen and then just waft them straight out in this sort of a, like a wave that washes over the group. Uh, I would love to, I would love to take a condition and use my elemental awareness. All right. What condition are we marking? Oh, God. Um, boy, that's tough. Like, I can't, I can't, I wouldn't say hopeless because this is almost like inspiring kind of that this is happening. Um, God, I hate to say afraid, but I think that's going to be it. Like it's uh, this. This was not the plan. Us busting right. in and being the threat was the plan. Uh, yeah. And I think part of why you feel afraid, um, the people who are in the cell currently, um, what you gather is everyone without powers has not been infected. Anyone who does have powers, and you can tell because there's a slightly different like pushback, uh, has been, and. Every single one of, like, Visionary's employees in this room has been. And that's probably what really kind of gets under your skin, is realizing how quickly they have deployed this within their hierarchy, and probably how little pushback there must have been for that to have had happened. Wow. Okay, um, I turn quickly to them. Uh... Anybody that works for them and anybody with powers is at least at the beginning stages, if not totally infected. Everyone else is fine. I can really get their attention if you want to. How are we doing this? Are you porting people out? Are we walking them out to? I mean, what how, What do you think? Uh, yeah, well, I can teleport some people out. All right. I'm going to make a real big distraction then. And then it's up to y'all to do what you do. Uh, and I'm just going to essentially glow from my actual body. That golden green tinged glow rips out of me as I float up and above the crowd and my voice starts to echo out saying, listen, and I want to invoke another burn for worship. You put out a tremendous display of your might. Spend one burn to awe an audience into silence, respect, and attention when you unleash your powers. Yes. Awesome. Roll to unleash your powers. I was about to ask you if you had the worship flare because that's oh, going to be perfect I for this. Oh, I sure do. Okay. Great. And that is, which is not great. Okay. Not hopeless, so that's good. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, skin of my teeth. Ten. Ooh, all right. So on a hit, you do it. Um, so yeah, so we get this really cool two-page spread, I think, as Codex like starts to glow. And I imagine like you float some too, as oh, you, yeah. we get this really large, echoey speech bubble that fills the entire space. Um, and like the rest of the room just falls quiet as everyone's attention turns to you. Uh, and like, there's just this moment where it's like, nobody can move. Um, like security, you can tell, like, they feel like they should be jumping into action. They clearly have some sort of orders, but they're not moving yet. What do y'all want to do? Uh, I mean, I want to. I want to go over and 
get her dad out of here. All right. That so moment where, like the crowd is looking up and there's one person like moving through the crowd. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Poop. <laughs> you gotta go. So I think you're able to teleport in, grab him, and teleport back out. Um, he's not really able to do much to stop you about that. But as you teleport back out, he immediately like turns on you and is like, "What are you doing? There are younger children in there than me. There are like there are others you should be saving before me. What are you? Yeah. Where is your head? Trust me. I got the costume on. Trust me. <laughs> and I will make him <laughs> vanish." <laughs> <laughs> I will send him to the farm. <laughs> the party barn? <laughs> to party barn. <laughs> I think I, I step in and take his role as okay. Vex takes him away. And so okay. I'm, I'm kind of directing people when I'm, I'm moving through the crowd and spreading the word to like get people to move away from the guards and the people who are under like brainwashed here uh, to make it a little easier for Vex to to get people out and then get them to party barn. So uh, <laughs> Synthesis' dad can look after him there. <laughs> yeah, and as that's happening, I think the guards are starting to recover. And we see like one guard like just hit their walkie and is, uh, it's just like, let Dr. Tanner know that they're here. Oh, <laughs> um, is there any chance that I see them going for that? I mean, do you really want to stop them from doing that? Sorry. If you would like to stop them from doing that, you can. Oh, no, you're right. No, that's that's a very valid point. That's exactly what we want. So nothing, Sorry, nothing. I, did, I went ahead and did that just because I knew that's what you wanted. Yes. But if you want to stop <laughs> nope. it, you can. I appreciate you. Though. No, no, you're right. I'm just like, I've got all these these uh, <laughs> different flares. I'm like, ooh, I, maybe I'll try. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it just kicks some ass. All the warships <laughs> go into his head. <laughs> Um, but before Dr. Tanner can get here, there's going to be, you know, a little bit there and the guards are turning towards you, um, Codex. And some of them are like shouting towards Vex and Sable about like, hey, you can't be doing that. And they're like shouting at the prisoners, like stop, what have you. There's a lot of noise and chaos going on. And it's still, we're hearing kind of the explosions in the background also getting closer to this building. What do y'all want to do? You got the device? Yeah, I, I've, I've got it on me. When Tanner gets here, we'll have to fight a little bit. I'll have to take a hit. But that, and I like, I think I like grab his shoulders and like look at him and I say, we have to sell this. Yeah. When the time comes, hold me back. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, the receiver, though. Yeah, and I I grab the the other part of the receiver for him to set up in the other building. Okay, give it to him. I'll be back for you. Okay. And I will go to uh, the main island and try to set this receiver up. All right. Uh, yeah, so we see Vex disappear out of, <laughs> out of sight, um, and Codex, these guards are, like, starting to come, like, at you, um, what do you want to do? They're all, they're all mundane, they have, like, normal weapons, but they also have a voice in their head telling them to do this, even though they really shouldn't be doing this. Right. Um, so I, and I, I, my apologies. I may have kind of missed this in the mix. Uh, d are there still others here besides them or is it just them left? I think we... you all left the, um, supers who are like in the early stages of infection, right? Right. Okay. Um, then I think I want to... Uh, I want to try to spring up my moat again um, to just billow out from our spot as if we're still trying to hold this position and keep them at bay. 
Uh, so these runes literally make a ring around us and and blast out, just expand very quickly um, to have this shield wall of, of twisting runes that catch, uh, catch and deflect anyone trying to get through. All um, right. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, and if, you know, any of these, whatever they have, whatever they're using, if anything is uh, more intense, obviously it'll break it down faster and use more burn, etc. Nah, n none of it's intense enough for that. Okay. Um, this, this is the holding cell. This is processing. The intense stuff's the next building over, and they, <laughs> they have other problems to deal with right now. Um, so... Yeah, we see that moat spring up, um, and you're not having much of an issue holding these people back at all. Um, but at the same time that we kind of see, like, Vex's teleportation panel away, we see um, a, like, small, um, like, individually piloted uh, aircraft, basically, uh, come in that dr tanner's on uh they basically have like these little hovercraft kind of thing that they can take between islands because they're visionary corp and why don't they um yeah. and they like we we get that nice cool like there's probably already a hole in the ceiling at this point let's be honest so they did like the nice cool drop in from the ceiling onto the ground like the dust shakes out uh, from where they land, there's that kind of resonating sound uh, throughout the uh, holding area as they do. And they look up at you, Codex, with disappointment. Oh, I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'll, I'll just start. Um... Don't look at me like that. Don't you dare. I'm allowed to look however I want. We put so much effort into all of you, and well, you all just proved to be a failed experiment. I'm allowed to be disappointed. You put effort into manipulating us. That's it. That's the only thing you did. They kind of just incline their head like you're not wrong. Like they assent to that. We were hoping that we would be able to make a team that we wouldn't have to go other routes with. But you all have proven that that's not a viable option. And as such, we'll have to deal with you in other ways. We'll have to try. I think uh, I, I, I hit my anti-graph pack and I, I meet Codex. Like, I get on his level. I stand, I stand right next to him. I think I'll, I'll whisper. We gotta throw some punches, but as soon as Vex gets back, we gotta go. Already. Um, as you say, we gotta try. Uh, they just smile and throw a punch at your moat. And for, like, how lean they are, you are not expecting, like, the resonating power that just goes throughout your moat. Uh, you can either let your moat shatter or spend a burn. And I have none left. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I think it shatters, and I think I even fall. I think I, I kind of hit the, the clumsy... Um, tipped over version of the hero landing. <laughs> uh, and as you fall, um, Dr. Tanner just continues kind of like this slow, steady approach. Um, they seem to be sort of calculating. That's, that is exactly what they're doing, Codex. You know, because yep. you do that. That is exactly what they're doing. Okay, then this is the last thing I want to, 
I, I want to run by you and I'm not sure how this, what this translates to, if I need to sort of wait for someone else to try something or what, but I know what they're doing. I know what they've chided me for before and they just shattered my shield. I want to look terrified. I want to look like I'm freezing here. Like they called me out on before that I am deer in headlights and open, easy target. All right, man. I wish you had the delinquent move. Everyone needs the delinquent move. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need to fail a couple rolls. Uh, can I take it? <laughs> Let's see. Because you're trying to get... Uh, are you ultimately, like, trying to get them to do something? Yeah, like, whether it's... Like, I'm almost... I feel like the closest here is a provoke. Like, I'm trying to get them to, to stumble in some way uh, so that when we start <laughs> taking swings, we have that advantage, or if, if I can give the advantage to... Sable. Um, yeah. Although I'll I'll pitch you this. Always if pitch. It, if possible too, like it wouldn't be out of my realm here to be taking this moment of pretending that I'm terrified to try to see more about what they're planning or what they're really what their intent that, is. Here. Yeah, that makes sense too. I can okay. I can go either way with this. Um, alternatively, uh, we can go the route of they are probably going to attack, and you can always use directly engage as a way to avoid blows and create an opportunity by keeping them focused on you. Um, so those are your three options. I'm happy with any of them because I'm I find powered by the apocalypse intent matters more than anything. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the latter, I think more of the let's, let's do the dust up. Uh, okay. Because that's kind of what we're ultimately aiming for anyway. Yep. All right. So um, you see kind of like um, Dr. Tanner come to the conclusion of their calculation and their stance change ever so slightly. So you know the blow is about to come as they're about to close this distance. Um, so go ahead and roll to directly engage a threat. Okay. Good old minus two. Whoa. Oh boy. Uh, ah, with the minus two, that is a nine. All right, so on a 7-9, you can pick one. Uh, you can resist or avoid, take something, create an opportunity, or impress, surprise, or frighten. I think I'm going to create an opportunity for Sable. That's that's a good call. Um, so I think what this looks like then is you sell the bit hard to the point that you do actually freeze up in that final moment. You're, it's like, oh, wait, wait, oh my actually, God. Like, you, you go full circle with it. Uh, that sounds right. <laughs> um, and let's see if you recover as this, like, kick just comes in solid on, like, your shoulder. Because uh, you kind of had that sort of inelegant superhero landing. I'd like you to roll to take a powerful blow because you might be able to uh, come out of this. I'm killing Kim. I'm killing Kim. Conditions. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, six. One and a two, and my three conditions. Oh, Tell boy. us how you stand strong. <laughs> Yes. Um, hell yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to miss you stand strong. Mark potential as normal and say how you weather the blow. Uh, so what is this hit exactly? Like, what are, what, like... Um, so Dr. Tanner is incredibly strong. Like, 
to the nth degree. Um, and they were going for like a very solid kick on your shoulder, like right into to both knock you out of your landing and push you back against the like just flying back across the room. Okay, so I think they come up for this kick and I do I do legitimately freeze. And so they get this kick and I slide back, staying on my feet. And from that spot, you see just panels of rippling energy. It's like it's straight up the Frodo wearing Mithril moment of these tiny, tiny little runes all down my tank top and the hood. And I'm just there's the gritted teeth and then the eyes dart up to them. Preparation is most of battle. Oh, yeah, and they look real irritated by that. Sable, you can tell they're really irritated, and you know when someone's irritated, they're not paying attention. What would you like to do with this opportunity that's been granted you? I think I, with my grab pack still activated, I kind of, like, pull up to the to the scene, and I say, get away from my friend, and I take off my, my coat, and I'm wearing the tank top that he got me, and um, oh. I want to <laughs> use my, my uh, portal gun to shoot under Dr. Tanner and then out the ceiling. And I'm going to be like, I have wanted to do this since you put a storm in that damn train and then hit him. All right, directly engage a threat. Okay, and that is with danger. Danger, danger. Very dark in here. Oh shit. Okay. And I have a plus one. So that's gonna be a twelve. Alright, on a ten plus pick two. Resist or avoid. Take something from them, create an opportunity, impress, surprise, or frighten. I'm gonna go with avoid the blows. Good choice. And uh impress, surprise, or frighten them. They're impressed for sure. Um, yeah, so basically you just, like, sky-dropped them, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, so you get this off, and, um, they aren't able to react fast enough at this point, and they know they're going through, um... They land pretty rough, they're able to roll out of it, but you can tell that, um... This was not a good landing for them. Uh, and as they stand up, you can see where kind of like their face um, scraped along the uh, concrete ground that like more of that circuitry is exposed. And um, there's like a little bit of kind of an electrical fraying that happens. And they do like kind of like the neck crack thing. And as they do that, you hear, like, um, a bunch of the, like, alarms start going off. All of the, like, fire um, sprinklers in the building start going off. Basically, any system that would have some sort of environmental impact in here immediately goes off. So we, you know, get that very sudden environmental shift. And they're like, ah, so you're finally getting serious now. Good. And we turn the page to Vex, who is setting up uh, the receiver. Vex, where where are you uh, popping up to set up this receiver? Uh, I think my impulse would be to go onto the roof uh, above and near Dr. Tanner's lab, because I think I've been on this roof a bunch. Um, could I, like, assess the area to see where it would be the best place to hide this so it doesn't stick out? Oh, yeah, totally. Go ahead and roll to assess the situation. Okay. Seven. All right. So on a seven to nine, ask one, and then you can always ask one from your criminal. Yeah. Mindfulness. Um. I yeah. I think what here can I use to hide the receiver? Um. So as you're kind of looking around, for the most part, like they've done everything to make this all nice and sleek and all of that. There still has to be, like, air intake vents. Like, some things cannot be avoided just from a purely physical stance. 
And you're able to find um, one of these intake vents is raised up a couple of inches and that like you'll be able to jimmy the vent off and set it kind of down in there and then put it back in place. Okay. And then, um, you know, this plan requires Dr. Tanner to come back and and start, you know, trying to to break down what Sable has left behind. I'm not sure if I'm not sure I'm not sure if I can ask this question in this environment, but I'll try and you can <laughs> tell me no. Uh, how could I best provoke Dr. Tanner? Like, is there anything I could do that would make them like, I'm going to utilize this technology right now? Like a, this isn't a set aside for later project. So I think kind of how this works is like you're thinking about this as you're setting up the like transponder and everything and getting the receiver set up and kind of just reflecting over the last because you all had worked with them for a little bit before this comic line started anyway. So there's been more history there than just what we've seen in the comic line. Um, and what you know about Dr. Tanner is that they do tend to be very like focused and very purpose driven but they also don't like to let opportunities pass up like be passed up and um you especially know that from how they trained you um because that was one of their big things in training was if you see an opening you take the opening mm -hmm. If you make a big deal um while getting sable out of there of we'll come back for it later uh-huh um like make it clear that oh we're not just gonna leave it forever yeah yeah uh they'll go for it quicker okay yeah so i will uh i will place the uh receiver and then i think i'm just kind of like on the edge of the roof watching in the direction of the island looking for I i'm not exactly sure when to come back and so I'm just kind of watching for a, a moment or two to see what's going on. Okay, I love this because you see something that they hear, but you actually get to see. So you can see kind of from where you are, like you see the holding building just because of how things are situated. You don't have a super clear like line of sight. Um, you can't see like a lot of specifics, but you know, okay, that's the holding building. Um, so you also see that there is that, like, higher security building behind it. Um, and you see a, like, very controlled explosion breaking into the top of that building. And you see Oversight dropping in there, flanked by, like, Ice and Dice and Copycat. Um, so... They're getting somebody out of high security. Yeah. Yep. Oh boy. Okay. I can't. Yep. I can't. I can't. I can't deal with that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Those are just breadcrumbs for later. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then I think after that is when you start seeing like all of the alarm lights on the outside of the holding cell, um, like building start going off that's probably a good sign to go back <laughs> <laughs> uh so we turn the page as you teleport back in uh right as dr tanner finishes off that good we're finally getting serious uh what do you all want to do as like sable dr tanner is like ready to come at you i mean as soon as vex gets back and i know that he's there I want to use my moment of truth. Moments of truth. All right. This is exciting. This is a good issue. Two moments of truth. All right. So I'm just going to like refresh from earlier. You're going to read me your moment of truth. You get to take full narrative control in the moment. I'll let you know about consequences later. Afterwards, you're going to permanently lock one label. So go ahead and read the... I almost said Harbinger, but you're not the Harbinger. You're the Nomad. Go ahead and read the Nomad's Moment of Truth. All right. You basically exist with one foot out the door, ready to leave this place, to go back out into the wide expanse of the universe. You've never fully committed, that is, until today. Until right now. 
Now you pour everything you have and everything you are into this moment. You pull off tricks no one from this planet has ever seen before. You use your tools in ways no one here could have ever imagined. You devote yourself here and now to a cause. And you achieve your goal in ways that you never could have if you'd only stayed home. Of course, now you've proved to everyone that you really don't belong here, and the very skills that let you succeed are the ones you earn from out there. All right, tell me what happens. I think I can see Dr. Tanner gearing up to come at me, and I think I just kind of let the impulsive kind of anger, chaos, wild energy that I have just always kind of let rule my life uh, kind of come to the surface. And I look at them and I say, what have you done with synthesis? Where is she? And I want to just run at them and like pull back to hit, but like make it really obvious. So I think we just see Sable, like anti-grad pack still on, heading straight for Dr. Tanner. And then they just hit me, just like square in the chest. And as I like go backwards, we see like a close up of uh, Sable like hitting that part of her belt that she messed with earlier. And we see the graph pack uh, fly, like skid across the ground as I fall to the ground. And I fly backwards as it flies the other direction towards them. And then I think I, 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 I'm on the ground and I'm just kind of like looking around, like I just hit, I just hit the ground literally from, <laughs> from the air uh, and my eyes lock on the graph pack and I look at Dr. Tanner, I look back at the graph pack and I look at Vex and then I look back and I just go, no! And I just run as fast as I can. And I'm like literally scrambling on the ground, toward, like reaching for it. When the graph pack hits the ground, there is the tiniest speech bubble that just says, <laughs> ow. Very, very <laughs> tiny. Oh, I love that so much. Um, I am like just double step scooping her up, like just around the belly and over my shoulder. We can't beat them. They're too strong. No, no, no. They have my graph pack. It's going to, it's going to ruin everything. They can't. Don't you, don't you open it up. Don't you dare open it up. We and I'm just time. Like, reaching over the shoulder. Like, it's going on. we like get those panels of Dr. Tanner, like picking up the graph pack. Um, as there's another explosion in the background and we feel the, um, gravity that actually, like, their fake gravity thing they do for these islands start to break for this island. And, like, we feel the island start to tilt. Uh, and I will appear next to Codex, who is holding back Sable, and I'll, I'll say, It's fine, we'll be back for it. They won't figure it out in time anyway. And then we vanish. I love it. Oh, oh! Also, before I forget, um, yeah. I, I, I would think that this, uh, this counts as, uh, um, 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 making a sacrifice. Yes, I will say this is the end of the scene. If we would like to clear some okay. conditions, <laughs> uh, so yes, you can clear guilty because you have made a sacrifice. Uh, so this is, I would say you also get to clear guilty because you stayed in the canister that entire scene. This yeah. was extremely hard for me. <laughs> um, let's see. What else do we have to clear afraid, run from something difficult? I don't think that happened. To clear angry, hurt someone or break someone, something important. Oh, I mean, does that, does that count as, like hurting them with like all like messing up the circuitry more Ooh, yeah I'll, I'll i'll give you that that that's a nice good scar uh let's see to clear insecure take foolhardy action without talking to your team no i i oh, really laid out this, everything this that felt like a do. really nice good team plan yeah. had some good team moments here um yeah, so we see, like, the three of you disappear, but we stay with Dr. Tanner and the Grav Pack, uh, which when they pick it up, 
Um, they kind of like turn it over, like looking it over, um, and they hook it onto like their own um, belt because they have like a tool belt kind of thing. Of course they do. Um, but they do take their flight vehicle back to their lab. Um, as like they're flying away, uh, we see in the background of that panel, um, like a group of figures, more than three figures, um, mm -hmm. jumping off the island to who knows where. Um, and our next page, we find ourselves in Dr. Tanner's office. Um, they have the graph pack on the table, on like the desk in front of them. They have like their tools out. They have all these scanners out. There's like a bunch of lights focused down on the graph pack. Um, we can see their terminal to the supercomputer, um, like in the background behind them. Um, and they're starting to work on like trying to figure out like how they're going to take apart the graph pack. Like this is their main focus right now, even though they should probably be focusing on something else. They are like, I got what I wanted. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so just to be clear in terms of the live stream receiver stuff, there isn't anything I need to be doing, right? Is it all set to go? All set to go. It would have been anything that needs to be set up to go out. It's going to be on uh, Vex's end with the receiver. Great. Then, yeah, I'm going to, as surreptitiously as possible, materialize behind Dr. Tanner. Yeah, let's uh, let's roll to unleash your powers to see if you can kind of just. Yep. Just be real <laughs> subtle. That's a nine. All right. So I will say, um, if your freak is less than three, you could act selfishly in this moment and use team selfishly um, to up your freak and lower another label after the roll. Mm -hmm. I can think of some ways you could act selfishly. Alternatively, you can either um, mark a condition or the GM will tell you how the effect is unstable or temporary. Um, I would love to mark a condition. All right. What I'm condition feeling, are we marking? I'm feeling very angry. They took my dad. All right. So we see you, like, on this panel very quietly. Like, it makes almost like a very ghostly synthesis at first behind Dr. Tanner before you rematerialize. And they're very engrossed in what they're doing. They didn't notice this happen at all. Okay. Um, I can't believe we didn't see it for so long. We helped you. Um, Dr. Tanner just, like, very slowly, like, sets the screwdriver that they were holding down. And in return, I helped all of you. You were each looking for something that I provided. I wanted to help people. And you did. Not like this. You took my dad. Well, you know being a hero is going to put him in grits, bleh, in danger at some point. I do my moment of truth. Yes! <laughs> 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 no! I knew it. All right, go ahead and read us your moment of truth. Oh. Oh, my gosh. 
Um, all right, it reads, The mask is a lie, and some piece of you has always known that. Doesn't matter if others can see it. You're the one that can do the impossible. Mask off, costume on, and you're going to save the damn day. Of course, you better hope nobody nasty is watching. All right. So, let's see. Sable, you established that there's like a camera in your graph pack, right? So we're like getting this whole thing. Yep. 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 Good. Yep. Good. Yep. Good. All right. So what happens? Um, I think in full view of that camera and not thinking about it, I... I think I'm still holding on to a bit of the electrical charge that I got from Outlet. And I just unleash it in this lab and it's there's a, a full panel of it frying the tech in Dr. Tanner and frying the terminal and yeah. Yeah, so we see that happen, and then we get a few more panels. Um, we get panels of, like, people who have been using the visionary AI on their phones, and it's like, visionary AI, no longer online. Um, we get, like, the uh, panels of, like, people whose websites were hosted on visionary servers, and, like, those websites go down. Uh, there's, like, that kind of, like, sudden outage that happens from this going on. Um, and Dr. Tanner themselves so the glowing bit of that um like the circuitry stops glowing and that had always lended like a glow to their eyes as well and that glow kind of goes away as well um and they normally like have a very straight and like proper posture and like they moved with, like, a very certain roboticness. Like, they weren't a robot, but they had that very mechanical nature to them. But as that shock kind of passes through them, you see, like, their shoulders loosen. And, like, their posture sort of kind of release. Um, and they slump forward a little bit. Um... But they haven't, like, you can tell they're about to pass out, but they haven't quite gone down yet. And uh, I think before they go out, um, they say, you know, it doesn't stop with just taking me out, right? I know. Calum Childs. All I can say is good luck with that one. And they slump forward and, like, pass out on their desk. And then I want to very quickly run out, and um, I want to find, like, our, our little visionary Vanguard clubhouse uh, and open up my locker and grab my spare pair of glasses because I was super blind and couldn't see through all of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love that you have a prescription mask. Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> All glasses wearing heroes have prescription masks. Yeah, it's just it's in the rule book. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do you all do now? Um, uh, I'm assuming like Vex and Sable and Codex, you are all aware this happened because of the whole transponder receiver situation. You got your front row seat. Can I, I would like to pitch, pitch you an image. I imagine the three of us standing at the farm with farm. her dad, like trying to talk to him and calm him. And then like him, you know, taking out his phone, da, 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 da. And like oh, that yeah. moment. And her dad does of... not have a visionary phone. That's too expensive. Um, you know, it's some like off-brand track phone. Yeah. And so what I'm wondering is, <laughs> yeah, 
Go on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, one second. I want to think about it. Sable, what... L Sable, sorry. Synthesis, what label are you locking? Um, I'm locking Savior at three. Awesome. Um, also, I didn't hit mine either. I'll, I'm going to lock Savior at two. Awesome. Good. Thank you for reminding me. See, I said Sable for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so we see him like watching this phone and like watching all of this happen um and i think he just like sits down on the orator's um pallet throne <laughs> and just like puts his head in his hands and is just like clearly overwhelmed like shocked into silence overwhelmed that's uh, that's why we had to make sure you were safe, because we had someone who had to have their head in the game. And, like, after you say that, like, his head pops up and he's like, but she's still there. You have to go get her. True. And then I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I will appear, uh, next to, next to, well, next to Harper. Oh. Yeah. I, it's funny, I see you every day with glasses, and I, you didn't strike me as a, glasses, uh, here. And I hold out her mask. Uh. Thank you. Is everything, is I, everything, oh, is, is he okay? Yeah, yeah, I have, I have great news and okay news. Great news first. Yeah, the great news is that everybody saw that. Like, it went everywhere. Uh-huh. Uh, the okay news is that it went everywhere. I don't know if you know this or not. Your dad doesn't have a, uh... He does have a smartphone, but not one that would be blocked against. Your dad would like to have a chat, maybe. Maybe some. Maybe we should all have dinner or something and just talk about some things. Kind of sucks that we dined and dashed on that ramen place. He'd really like it. <laughs> you ready? No. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, hold up my hand. I'd take it. Hey. What? You got this. You're the leader, remember? That's right. And I take us to her dad. Yeah, so I think we're going to get um, a couple of final panels to wrap up for tonight. Um, synthesis, when your dad sees you, he doesn't say anything. He just hugs you. Like, he just, like, pulls you into a hug. Like, will not let go of you. It's just, like, sobbing. Like, one of those hugs, basically. Uh, <laughs> exactly the same and I don't, I don't think the rest of the team has ever seen Synthesis this extremely emotional, but just, just as just sobbing and just hugging my dad. Uh, Sable, you notice in the group of people who have been saved, your uncle is not there. Um, Codex, you have a message from your parents that. Um, they haven't been able to get this out of outlet, um, but they have been able to, like, keep him under. So there's that. Um, but they've kind of had to, like, majorly ward the house for the time being, so you might need to crash on somebody else's couch tonight. <laughs> Just because, you you know, opening the door, it messes with the wards. It's, it's oh, a yeah. whole thing. Oh, yeah. Um, there is at least one or two quick panels after everything sort of calms down from her initially appearing to me 
literally picking up and spinning every member of the team around, just cackling <laughs> in glee, just like to each one of them. I w it went. It was so perfect. We solved for X so well. It was everything was exactly how it was supposed to be. <laughs> and like literally synthesis up on my shoulder, like you, you even this said Caleb's name. It was so dope. The doc spilled everything, you magnificent motherfuckers. I love you so much. And just that kind of trailing off. I have to say, for those of you who saw uh, Ossifer's art from last week's episode of at the very bottom panel, there's two images of Vax. And one of them is like smiling and the other one's just deadpan face. That is the exact deadpan face I just imagined in that same image of him being spun by Codex. <laughs> <laughs> just that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So we get those couple of panels of celebration. It's a really great, uplifting moment. And then we turn the page. We still have an issue left. <laughs> we still have an issue left, y'all. You just you just fozzy bared us like the way that you laughed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And in this page we see Oversight and Sapphire. Um and they're having a conversation. Um, they're like sitting in the attic of that building uh, that Oversight's kind of been operating out of the um, brown ha uh, brownstone house. Um, they're both kind of like looking up at the moon. There's a uh, TV playing the news in the background. And a Sapphire, like we see a um, speech bubble from Sapphire that asks, so were you able to get them out? And Oversight um, responds, yeah, um, they're, uh, they've, they've gone underground for the time being, but I think uh, that's probably not going to last for very long. But we still have a little bit more work to do with Visionary first. And in the bottom right-hand corner, we see To Be Continued. Excellent. Woo! Yes! Oh... End of session time. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, I mean, I think it has to be grow closer to the team. For for me, anyway. Like, he was really, like, really scared about unknown quantities. Like that is just the worst but everything went like just yeah that that went as good as i think we could have expected um oh but now gosh i sure want potential but i also have three conditions <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, no but no. you're supposed to have conditions <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're right i am going to mark potential YOLO, as the kids say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to grow closer to the team as well. Um, and I'm actually going to... I'm going to give it to Sable, because I feel like since, like, issue three, when they had a couple of just misunderstandings right in a row, that they haven't... There's been this weird disconnect between Vex and Sable, and the moment of, hey, I'm, I'm trusting you to get me out of here... You know, just that moment of the plan was the first time in a long time where uh, Vex felt like, like, okay, everybody here trusts me now, as opposed to, like, a couple of people trust me and someone tolerates me. Um, so, yeah, you can. Uh... I'm going to mark potential. I don't have any conditions. Okay, and then I shift your labels. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, one's locked? Superior? Superior is locked. Okay. Uh, what so are the other ones? Danger minus one, freak zero, savior plus one, mundane zero. Um, 
I gotta bump your savior up for sure. Uh, and I guess... I think you're mundane down. Okay. There's a point where uh, these stats start getting real tricky. <laughs> when yeah. they stop shifting, you're like, well, I live here now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean... I mean, I feel like mine is basically the other side of that coin closer to the team and it's got to be the vex of like like having this plan laid out of like we're we're gonna make this all worth it and we're gonna like I'm, I'm gonna sacrifice this this thing to to get us where we need to get and i know that you're going to be there when we need you to be there yeah so, uh, and then I'm going to clear insecure because I feel like I did real fucking good this session. So I'm, yeah. I'm feeling a lot more confident um, in my abilities, even though I I've, I've lost <laughs> uh, something pretty important. Um, so my savior is locked at two, but okay. I have plus one danger, zero freak, plus one superior, negative one mundane. Hmm. I, I, um, I oh sorry go. Go, no I just, just a thought that occurred to me but you're in the middle of this go, please continue uh, I'm going to uh, bump your danger up um, because you did some real active stuff there uh, and I think I'll take your superior down Um, I'm realizing I didn't pick someone specific for mine either. Um, I like. I think this could be true for three of us, but it's still like I'm part of that. I think I want to give it to Synthesis for literally going, like putting all of her trust in us to complete this, to put her where she needed to be. Like there was a moment of not necessarily doubt, but at least like, I don't want you to have to do this alone, but she stuck to it and and put that trust in us and that is very very big for codex um so yeah i think that um and for the purposes of shifting i am at zero zero plus three plus one minus one hmm um, okay, I think I'm going to raise your freak, especially because you were so clutch in manipulating your powers to try to help me manipulate my powers. Okay. Um, and I'm going to, ooh, lower your danger. <laughs> Oh, yeah. This wow. This is I know. Fun. Oh, that it's makes so a nice little design. I think You've it's got so like scary. A, a nice little pizza slice there. Yep. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> yep. Um, I think I also grow closer to the team, and I think it's with Vex. What? Um. um yeah. Sorry. Go. Yeah. On. No worries. So, uh, so my labels, um, savior is locked. Uh, but my danger is zero, my freak is zero, my superior is two, and my mundane is minus one. I think that you get, uh, I think your mundane goes up and your superior goes down. Okay. Because I have this whole time we've been having these interactions, whenever I have pushed you, it's it's moving your superior up. But the agreement was that we just made was that that's what I'm here for. Like I'm supposed to see the superior stuff, so you do the stuff you're good at. Um, and so I don't think I'm pushing her to 
to be watching the whole battlefield anymore. All right. As a note, Sable, since Synthesis didn't use Team Selfishly, I do believe you got your graph pack back. Um, oh. If she had decided to use Team Selfishly, I was going to say break the graph pack. So... <laughs> Well, I mean, like, okay, so broken versus not broken versus do I have it or not? Because nobody mentioned bringing it back to me. So I assumed it was like I'd have assumed it would have gotten brought back to I would have, yeah. I would have brought um, it back. Okay. Yeah. And it works? Unless, okay. yeah, and it works because Synthesis acted pretty quickly. Unless okay. you don't want Sable to have it. But no. I'm fine with Sable having it back and functional. Of course I want her to have I it. Well, uh, uh, that's me also, because I'm also cool in Sable's character development, it also having been left there. Right. Not, uh, I I was thinking about, I mean, like, it's a pretty big part of, like, what I can do. But I think it was left behind. I mean, like, right. if it still works, maybe I can get it back. Okay. All right. Well, but it I still think, works. Yeah, but I, I don't think I know that yet. All I think right. a big, I think a big part of, uh, of kind of this, like you said, character development was like, I didn't know what Dr. Tanner, like breaking into this was gonna do to it. I have no, like of all of the things that I take apart and rewire, this is not something that I have ever messed with. And so I didn't know what to expect and I was ready to sacrifice it. Um, but I th I think uh, maybe maybe beginning of next, uh, next session, that that's gonna be a little bit of a priority for me to see if I can get that back. All right, I'm here for it. And everybody gets a bonus potential for being an absolute delight to GM for today and showing some of the best drama and all the reason to play Masks for all the good heartwarming moments. Had the good highs and the good lows. It was wonderful. It was an absolute delight. Nice. nice. That was so much fun. Yeah. All right. Um. All right. <laughs> So uh, thank you, uh, all of you, for watching. Thank you, Keen, Ki uh, Keen Kitchen and Quest and Chaos for the follows. Uh, thank you for the resub, Mike, 14 months. Uh, amazing. Um, so many bits. Carrie, thank you for the bits. Uh, the monthly tithe for the Church of Codex. Uh, <laughs> I am a T-Rex, also, uh, also cheered um, a tithe for the Church of Codex. Um, Josh cheered a whole bunch for each character's moment of truth. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the Raid Untold Stories project. Thank you for the host. Uh, Bluebirds Fly and Keen Kitchen and uh, Amanda, I'm a T-Rex, snuck in with another Bits donation and another Bits donation uh, saying, uh, saying happy birthday, Harvey. Uh, <laughs> not my little Harvey. brother, but Rev's dog. Yeah. Although maybe, maybe, they, maybe, maybe they share a birthday now. Same birthday. Her, they share the her little brother's namesake. <laughs> yeah, they share a birthday <laughs> yeah. now. Um, all right. So looking ahead to the rest of the week. Um Please join uh, Rev and I tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be doing a listen through of season one, episode five of The Crit Show. Uh, we're going to be uh, reminiscing about uh, old antics from our very first arc on The Crit Show, as well as providing some behind the scenes commentary and answering chat questions. Thursday. So much fun. Yeah, we're like, having. I'm having so much fun doing them. Yeah, we're having a ton of fun. Thursday, uh, the 24th at 7 p.m. Eastern, it is Megan and Mine's Mystery Detectives Detectiversary. We have been doing this series for a whole year now, and we are celebrating with something extra special. We're going to be getting together with a couple of guests in costume and playing some good old-fashioned Clue. <laughs> and I'm very excited. The ultimate mystery. Yep. Uh, and we're gonna be we're gonna be putting a little bit of a little bit of a spin on it uh, mm -hmm. as well. So it should be should be a grand old time. I'm pretty excited. Um and then Saturday, the twenty sixth at eight PM Eastern, Rev and I are gonna be back with another listen through. We're gonna be listening to season one, episode six of the Crit Show. So we're gonna be finishing the first arc this week. Uh, which I'm super excited about. And then of course, Monday, uh, next week at eight PM Eastern, please join us, uh, all of us for the uh, finale of the Omniverse Chronicles Masks. Issue 8. Or there will be no dramatic cliffhanger. I, uh, no. 
Yeah. Well, this is this this is gonna be our beach episode. <laughs> this is where we yeah. just want I never gave them. you all a beach beach. I I gave you the party. Episode. We had a party. Yeah, yeah we, had we had a party. party. Yeah, 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 we just we just quietly <laughs> dispatch of Caleb Childs off off page and then just spend the rest of the episode <laughs> just having fun. The beach. Yeah, we yeah. Can the beach. You we're don't playing, need to worry. We're teenagers, we can have multiple parties. We can have I, multiple beach episodes. <laughs> I didn't highlight people getting broken out of high security for any reason. Nope. nope. <laughs> I don't know yeah. that. Yeah. Nope. They're bringing the ice. Um, if you have not yet <laughs> caught up on all the episodes of the, of the Omniverse Chronicles, uh, good news. You can do that on our YouTube channel. That's also where all of our listen-throughs uh, of early season, uh, early episodes of The Crit Show also live there as well. Um, uh, you have one more week to get your Codex Augury, he who spelt it, dealt it, tank top. So uh, please get that in. We will be closing orders uh, once Masks issue eight is finished. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Um, it, this will get announced uh, on, on third, well, maybe even tomorrow. Uh, we usually do a week ahead, but um, we are doing the sixth listen through on Saturday because the following Tuesday is going to be our monthly AMA. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can uh, mark that down as well. Uh, speaking of AMAs, uh, you have oh. just a little bit more time to get in your questions for the season three Crit Show Q and A. Uh, please send us those questions by July second, and you can uh, send those to us via emailing us at the cast the crit show podcast uh, or you can use the contact us form on our website. So uh, get those questions in so that we can answer them on our July twenty eighth episode. And now I think I'm done. Now that's it for all me. right, uh, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week for issue eight of the Omniverse Chronicles. Thank <laughs> you.